Um, do I have my happy word that I'm live? Hi guys, I'm pretty sure I am with you. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, I see me somewhere and that's the most important thing. All right, okay. Welcome guys to Dating Your Diet here with moi, Lisa Berry, and I've got my name in the corner down there <laughs> this time so that you guys don't confuse me and think I'm Ruth. Um, I am so happy to be here today. I was really, really excited as... We've been talking about, okay, yeah, so let's let's give everybody a moment to come online here. And what I will do first is check in with you to see who here has been doing a few things that we've already been learning about. So the very, not very first, was it the first one that we were learning and, and, and figuring out and maybe adding into our world was some flossing, some tongue brushing, some oil pulling. So please let me know if you guys are doing that. I asked you that last week and I heard from you. Some of you are uh, already adding some essential oils to your oil pulling. Um, and some of you have just newly incorporated that. Because we've actually been doom, doom, yeah, two weeks now for that, I would love a check-in. Who has noticed any difference yet? Any little bit brighter, whiter of the teeth? How about your taste buds? Have they changed? Has the freshness of your mouth, you know, improved? Have you noticed any kind of, um, just a, a difference in feel in your saliva? Are you maybe making a little more saliva? Are you making a little less? Are you feeling smooth? So these are some fun questions. And this is what dating your diet is all about. It's about noticing and awareness and questioning. And because just like whether you haven't dated in decades or you're back in the dating game or thing, that's what you're getting to know someone. You're getting to know yourself in this particular instance, right? So you're dating your diet. Yes to get to know food, absolutely. What are the foods out there? What's available? Who am I attracted to? What foods am I being called to spend some time with, right? Um, and what foods are you passionate to make you happy and really you know, have a, a strong, solid impact in your life? But, but just like when we date someone, we get to know a lot about ourselves. We learn who we are and what our needs are. And how often are we meeting our needs? Are our needs met? Yes, yes. So uh, this is the fun part about dating. So I'm gonna be asking you guys questions from, from day one when we started with this oil pulling. Now the second one, last week, we talked a lot about skin. We did skin, we did skin brushing, we did the lymphatic system. We talked about, you know, just cleansing and, and removing impurities from our body. And we went right from the whole body to the, the skin on our, our face and, you know, in our lymph nodes. So I'm going to pop on line here because um, I want to check in and see if you guys are making some beautiful comments. So I know it's going because today, today, guys, we are doing, I'm going to pop here so I can see you. Okay. Let's go to live. All right. Oh, yay. Okay. Oh, we've got some wonderful people here. So let me just go with that one. So Susan, oh yeah. And we did seed sprouting and stuff. So we've got Suzanne is here. Hello, Suzanne and Stacy. Yay. Um, oh my gosh, Suzanne, whiter teeth for sure. And good breath. I know, right? Like that is so much, that's one of the most fun things. Like we want we want like a, a validation, right? We want to experience some benefit and to be able to show other people and, and, and say, look at this. Like we want to see results, right? You want to see results. So this is so fun. I'm so happy for you guys. And um, Suzanne also for, yeah, soaking the nuts. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> the struggle is real. That's hilarious. <laughs> Stacy, Stacy, I love that you're doing, um, Stacy and I get to talk offline a little bit as well. So I know she's just doing so many things here. So, Okay, I've got papers in front of me. And so I don't normally, you know, read things, but I'm going to read these ones because today I really, we're really jumping in. If you guys are ready, I want you to start dating your diets before marrying your menus. Now, some of you have already married some things in your menu and we, we might need to divorce them or dump them. <laughs> so what we're going to do is find out, well, how would you know? How would you know if a food really isn't serving you or it's holding you back or you don't even know, you don't even know why you're eating. So what I have put together, this is, oh my gosh, guys, I'm going back so many years, 2007. I want to say 2007. I put together something called the menu match profile questionnaire, MMPQ. All right. So we're going to be going through 
not all of the questions. Back then I created about 33 questions. I would love to get through 14 of them just at least so I can share them with you and, and have you start asking yourself these questions. But without asking these questions, can you imagine jumping online and just dating the first person that waved, winked, I don't even know all these signs, whatever did, you know, you, you have a profile that you create, first of all, because you you know yourself, you think you know yourself, right? You think you know yourself and what are certain things are, are deal breakers, hmm? uh, the absolute no's and the absolute yeses. You might be sitting there uh, with a celiac. So, but there's a no, we are not dating anything with gluten in there, <laughs> you know? However, there might be other things like, you know, I'm willing, I would like to explore and try some somebody like not just core values and things, but this is really about finding out your state of health that you're in right now. So right now you may need to date a diet that's very different in like Stacy, who's coming out of surgery. She's going to need to date a certain diet right now. And then once she's healing and healed from this particular thing, she's going to move on to something else. Now, the most important thing is I'm going to call this the foundation, the foundation. So as we create your profile, so your profile, these are some of the questions that you're going to be using. And before I go into those questions, so first of all, who's excited? Let me know who's excited to start doing their menu match profile questionnaire. <laughs> and oh, oh, I should mention, whatever questions we don't get through today, don't worry, um, I will send you, I will happily send you the rest and the remaining of the questions if you just email me. So email me, it's super easy, lisa at datingyourdiet.ca. So lisa at datingyourdiet.ca and just write in questionnaire or questions or menu match, match me up with my menu, right? Let me fall in love with the right food for me <laughs> right now, actually too. fall in love with the right food for me right now. My foods have changed so much. And you know, what's interesting is so that over the decade, let's call it over the decade, uh, this profile question really had to change because a lot of us have been asking these questions. We are aware of what we're, our needs are. We are being more active and testing ourselves. We're testing our blood glucose levels. We're testing our ketones. We're intermittent fasting. We are experimenting with different kinds of flowers and um, you know, not just wheat, right? We're buying organ. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, sorry, I just remember something. Um, we are aware of the value of organic and what that means. And and if you don't, that's okay. Cause guess what? They're going to be in this questionnaire. <laughs> and so, and there's going to be way more than 33 by the time I'm done. Cause so much has changed. Um, but you got to find out what, like, I've been really playing around with um, intermittent fasting. I, that's not something I ever, that was like a deal breaker. I'm not going without eating. Ah, right? <laughs> but then when, when you are faced with different challenges and different, you're at a different point of your life, your different health goals. Yeah. Different health goals require different things. And so I'm not, I'm not a strong, powerful intermittent faster. I'll, I'll share that with you guys right now. I'm basically, I'm working on trying not to eat after six. Yeah. And when I do break my fast in the morning to only be breaking it with fats, you know, avocado or a little bit of, well, I was doing cream, but now I made my oat cream. Oh my gosh. It's, it's divine. It's so good. It's so easy. And it's really cheap. It's so cheap. Like Wow. And I can do organic. I can do organic oat cream. So I'm saying so many things right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little peek in here with everybody. Um, this is the fun thing with you guys is there's so much to learn and it's not just about what's the newest food and do I like it? And that's what we're going to be asking some of these questions. It is really about the foundation. Even right now, gosh, I just have to remind myself again to to sit up and it's not just like to be polite. Of course, I want to look pretty for you guys, but it really is about Am I breathing properly? Am I, I just had an avocado. So, you know, am I digesting that problem? Am I squishing myself all up? So foundational awareness, that's what your health is. This is not just health. It, this is well-being. This is well-being. And I can't imagine a better state of well-being than to be in love with the right foods from, for myself, for you guys. Like this is a whole game changer, literally. So something fun I want to share. Um, I hope this, I hope that you really, really take notes. Maybe that's what I'm going to say. Take notes <laughs> on these three. I want to share with you three of the hardest and most self-loving 
and some may call it selfish, <laughs> things that I had to do um, and that I've never had regret doing them. I will always continue doing them. And it what if it wasn't for these three things, doing the menu match profile questionnaire ugh, almost wouldn't even have any benefit either. So I'm really starting you off with some key. This is like 101. <laughs> this is like literally, yeah, maybe I should have started off with this one, but I'm glad that, you know, we've got a little bit of a relationship going ourselves here, a connection. Um, and you guys feel comfortable to ask me some stuff because this is almost like, this is, this is for real guys. We, we're really, we're going to date our diets. And so I'm going to tell, tell you these three things. Then we're going to go into some questions and we're going to have fun doing it. Okay. And what I'll do, I think what I will do, uh, let me know if you guys want this or not next Thursday, because we really wanted to share with you about organic stuff. Um, and not just organic to be organic, but organic in the sense of how to identify it. Why am I doing it? What's going on with the soils and the plants and the all vitamins and nutrients and all that good stuff. Is it worth the money? Why is it so expensive? Why isn't it expensive? Why is it more available or not? I can see that I'm frozen in some weird way. Um, and good morning. We've got Tammy and we've got Andrea. Yeah, I saw that I froze there a little bit. I don't know if I really did. So uh, me too. Suzanne is working on intermittent fasting. Beautiful. There's benefits. You know, actually, just let's stop there for a second. Just about that intermittent fasting. What made me, and by sharing these three things, we'll go into them. But what made me give it a try was I wanted to give my digestive system a break. And I wanted to give it a break enough so I could catch up, <laughs> let, let my body catch up with the food that I gave it could be the healthiest food ever could, you know, but it was important that I gave my, my body some, some time to catch up. I'm noticing that I'm freezing. Just let me know if I am freezing or if I am not, I don't think I am hmm. anyways. Okay. So the three, 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 three secrets to loving a balanced and having a loving balanced relationship and things you need to be clear about before starting to date your diet and even doing that menu match profile questionnaire. Number one, you have to be honest with yourself that you need, that you need, that you have to, and want to make these changes. With that, um, you, if we're not listening to the symptoms that our body is giving us, and we're just often about, you know, oh yeah, there's a little thing gone wrong and there's another thing, little thing, uh, you're not listening. You're not going to want to make any changes. You're not going to want to shift your relationship with food. So number one thing is to really know that, that, that you, that you want to do this. If it's a forced thing or you have to, or the doctor tells you, or somebody else has made a comment that you're not really particularly fond of, um, maybe about your weight or how you look, you know, or things like that. But if you don't want to do it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Um, I, I want to share this one story there. One of my clients, this is a while ago. She was a young, she was a young lady. I uh, was like 29, 28 or 29 years old. And since the age of eight or nine, she, she started going through puberty. She gained some weight and she it's, it was at that point, two decades, imagine 20 years of living her life day in and day out of just knowing that she needed to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I need to see the scale move. I need to drop pounds. She'd been doing it for so long and just been told to like, that's her only thing every day. And I remember asking her, well, why do you want to lose the weight? And she really stopped and she was, I have no idea. I just know that I should, that I've been told to, that I have to. And that, that was a very emotional moment for myself and her to sometimes go, wow, I've, I've been doing something out of habit and um, yeah, it's just a, it's a habit that you continuously do and you don't know why you're doing it anymore. And you guys are going to laugh, but I have to let a cat in. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. Thought you were gone. All right. See, we got we got cats doing false false alarm yelling. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, in that moment of realizing why you're doing something, so I had to take one of my my things out. Was I have a cup of tea every morning, and I thought, oh, well, do I know why I'm doing this? I just have always done this all my life. And I thought, well, I really, really want to start having that cup of warm water, if not hot water, with lemon. Why can't I do that first? You know, why, 
And so you start asking yourself these questions about why am I doing what I'm doing? Is this important to me? Do I want to make these changes? So I thought, well, okay, so I could have this hot water alone, but why am I doing that? Well, you know, it's, it's extremely helpful for your digestive system and getting it going and the vitamin C and the lemon juice also helps prepare your bowels to get going. So there's all these things I thought, wow, I really want to do that. The change or the addition, right? I still have the tea. <laughs> that change was effortless. It literally it was like, of course, I want to do this. So it was easy. If I didn't want to do it, I would forget or I wouldn't know the value of it. Okay, so how many of you are agreeing there too? I want to when I'm ready. Ah, you're good. Not freezing. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. <laughs> okay, so everybody, um, I, that's so funny about the cat thing. I have to laugh at that. Um, second thing, ready? So now you know that you want to make these changes. Second thing is you have to make a commitment to these choices. So now what is in with a commitment? You ready for this one? This is, oh, I gotta say, this is probably one of the toughest things. Could be financial, but social social commitments. You know, when we're, when we're by ourselves doing our thing, we can commit. How easy is that? Right? Yeah. You're like, I can control when I eat, what I eat, what I don't eat. Um, there's no social pressures. Everybody else isn't making foods that I can smell, uh, that I really <laughs> want. And it's like hard to resist and say no. Um, what about even if, if you're the person making the food in the family and you're being relied upon? So here you are, maybe you don't want to eat that, or you want to eat differently but you're, you don't, you can't have the expectations that everybody else is because they're not doing all these other things. Do they want to, are they questioning, you know, are they partnering with those same things? So the commitment is huge, huge commitment. Um, so I want to, oh, and taste buds. Okay. So here's another thing, your taste buds. Remember we talked about how in your, in your healthy gut, your gut, those little bacteria, they're the ones talking a lot. They're saying a lot. They're the ones who are driving your drive, like literally they're driving by going, Ooh, we want that. That looks sexy over there. Ooh, this is going to make me feel good. So making a commitment, yes, it's willpower, but then you have to know what is it I need to do to make the commitment? What would hold me back from being faithful? What would hold me back? What would, what would, what would make me cheat? Right. And you know, I don't like that word cheat for cheat days and things like that. Remember we use the word exception, right? We don't, we don't, we're not cheating and we're not having a treat when we do something off of our thing. It's just an exception. But what I'm talking about here is breaking your commitment. So in preparation for this commitment, now you want to do it. You are committed. There might be a time that you might have to have a conversation with your family, with your mate, with your um, person who does their groceries. You might have to have a conversa um, conversation around setting things up. And so it's not just like, wham, I'm doing this. Maybe there's some preparation and planning that needs to be put into place. Maybe you decide you want to buy organic or a, a supplement, a vitamin you want to. Um, I just incorporated a, a new, oh my gosh, probiotic. <laughs> I can't remember the word. <laughs> probiotic into my, my, my diet, right? I'm dating my diet and it's not cheap. It's like 60 something bucks a month, right? And so I had to prepare. What was my commitment? It, what if I didn't want to spend the 60 bucks? What if I didn't have the 60 bucks? Maybe, you know, well, which happened, you know, the sink breaks or your roof is leaking, <laughs> right? All these things. So financial commitment, time commitment, social commitment, super important. And number three, you had to love and accept that you won't be perfect. This is a big one. And that it's okay if you need to um, change your change what you're doing at first to say, okay, I'm going to do it perfectly. And then you don't, well, that's okay. There is no need for punishment or giving up. Okay. So that's the two things I really want to stress on that third thing. So you don't expect to be perfect. And when you're not right. So you, so you, so you screw up. So you, you don't have the water and lemon one day. You, you didn't feel like it. I don't know something. Just don't be so hard on yourself and don't punish yourself and don't give up. I love the word reset love the word reset. Now, funny thing about relationships before we go into the, this is going to be an interesting thing. So when I was a, a kid, when I was a teenager, um, I believed in, in giving up and walking away oh, very easily. Uh, heaven forbid, I wasn't perfect. And I had a fight with somebody I was dating. Oh my gosh, the world was ended. I, I felt like I was the worst person in the world. It's ruined our, our friendship, our relationship, the connection ruined. I would, I would just like be so, it would make me like almost sick to my stomach that the 
that perfect, that, that bubble, that, um, just blissful feeling was, was tainted and ruined. And I would walk. I was like, I couldn't handle it. So this is what we want to prevent. When you make your commitment, it's with your best intention. You know, if you can't do something, somebody shows up and they're like, oh, but it's a, it's a party. And I made this, or your friend gives you something that you really, really want. So just, just have some self-love there. That's really important. And that's what dating your diet is about. And you'll find out like maybe the commitment you made wasn't the one, you know, maybe it's time to move on from that one. So those three things are really, really going to help you. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, let me know if you like any of those, which ones stood out for you? Which ones do you think you'd have to um, prepare more, um, make the commitment more, want more, um, or know that it's okay not to be perfect. So I allow my spouse to pressure me and I fall back into hold habits. I absolutely, that's me. That's so me. I know what I need and want to do, but I give in. Stacey, this is so, so, and you know, it's funny. It is about a, a lot more of a, a conversation at that point that you, you can't expect the other person, another person, your whole family to, they're not, they're not certainly probably not going to do it that you do. Or they may not even understand. They're like, well, wait a second. You're, you're changing how you're eating. And now we can't share what we're going to share. So maybe start looking for the other things that you do share together or that you say, well, you know what? maybe I can't share this with you every night. Like for me, the stopping eating at six is, is very tricky in this little household. Um, and so sometimes I think, okay, well, maybe I could do it four days a week and not three, but then what will happen? And I can promise you and guarantee you this, you feel so good when you do it the way you do do it. And that, that person generally loves you and says, wow, I can see how, you know, you're not that happy and you don't feel that great. And your health is suffering when you when you do what I really want you to do. So maybe there's something different. It's a lot of communication and the communication comes from doing your, um, your questionnaire, doing your, your profile profile is important. You need to know your profile and everybody else's profile. Well, I'm going to jump right in guys. So any questions, just keep asking them. Okay. Yay, Stacy. Thank you. Um, any questions, just pop them in here in the live. Let me know if you're catching the replay. You can always email me at lisa at datingyourdiet.ca for any questions, comments, or if you want the full, all these questions, um, all of them, whatever we don't get through today, right? So we've got another 10, 15, 15 minutes. All right. So I wanted to start with, do, 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 do. where's my first question? Okay. Ha ha. What is the thing that most attracts you to food? Is it that you have to eat? Is it that you love the smell? Is it you love feeling satisfied? Is it you love cooking it? Maybe you like cooking it, not even eating it, right? We have hunger. If, are you hungry? You know, I, oh, I'm going to share something. Um, I'm, I'm going to share something about hunger. Just I'll let me come back here. Cravings, other people's needs. Is this something that attracts you to food? Other people's needs. This is, this is huge. Um, boredom, ah, boredom. I need something. I need something to chew on. Is it a distraction? Are you using food to stop another habit or to procrastinate? Ah, right. Procrastinate. Uh, two things. Like, this is so much fun. So basically this question is why are you eating? Why are you eating? I eat a lot for health. I, I think, gosh, I need some vitamin C, <laughs> you know, or mm, I need some, I need to relax. I need some magnesium. What has magnesium? Ooh, um, I'm having like, I just literally go through so many things. Like for me, it's, it's very health-based. This is why I'm eating. Sometimes I, I almost have to eat, I eat too much because I'm like, well, I want all those vitamins and, and minerals and fiber and nutrients in me, but I didn't really want to eat that much, but I just want the goodness in them. I just want the goodness, like the, all the health benefits. And sometimes we need to give it a break. So that's your number one thing. What is the thing that most attracts you to food? I want to say about, um, hunger. I used to be terrified of being hungry. I was afraid, like going, oh, I can't go somewhere for three hours. I will starve to death. Like I will start and then I won't feel well. And I, my blood pressure, will, my sugar will drop. I'll, I'll get lightheaded or I won't be able to focus. And I would have such anxiety about anticipated hunger. Like it was freaking me out. I, in fact, actually was afraid to go to sleep at night thinking, what happens if I get so hungry when I'm sleeping that I die? Like it was this, this thing in my head. And, and really what it stemmed from was there was a time when I was in a bad relationship and they prevented me from eating. And it was a, a very weird abusive thingy. And so I vowed to myself, which I didn't realize I did, but I vowed to myself to say, I will never go hungry again. And I will eat as much as often and whenever I want, right? It was like rebellious freedom. Yeah. So sometimes maybe you weren't allowed to have sugar 
when you were little and growing up. So now you're rebelling and you're going crazy pants with it. <laughs> you're eating sugar all the time. And really what this was for me, and maybe you'll find this um, in common is that I was so afraid of having those, those awful feelings of low sugar, um, getting dizzy and stuff because I wasn't eating the right food in the first place. Had I been eating the foods, you know, which I now do that um, give me, that, that sustain me, there's no fear. I'm not going to die. I'm going to be okay. And in fact, I actually like a little rumble in my tummy these days. Cause I'm like, ha ha. I know that I'm actually, I'm using up, I'm doing stuff with, with the food that my body really should be. And it's functioning properly. So that was a really powerful question here. So, um, we've got Christina here. Thank you so much. Christina says I'm an emotional eater and distraction. Also, I found out what I thought was hunger was really thirst for water. I'm so glad you said that. I'm also social eater. See, these are tricky things. Thank you for saying the water. We will eat and eat and think, what do I want next? What do I want next? Um, or I'm hungry and I'm not satisfied and you're thirsty. What was that um, acronym? Hungry. Halt. Oh gosh, I can't remember you guys. What was it? Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I thirsty? Oh gosh, if you guys remember, you have to share it with me. I will have to put that in there, but it's emotions and thirst and body stuff. So um, something about water, guys, some people can't just start drinking two liters of water right away. Your are your eight cups. Um, how, ma- how many glasses of water are you guys comfortable? Share with me. I'd love to hear this. How many glasses of water or ounces of water um, are you, you comfortable drinking? And, um, so let's do that's one question. And the other question is, is I would like to just highlight because this is for myself. I drink so much herbal tea. I drink, I eat so many watery vegetables, like a lot of watery vegetables that I find that I was like, Whoa, I barely have enough room for my water, but I do get, you know, at least my four, it's, I only can get four glasses of water and generally a day I can go six, but it's cause I have so many other, I just, you just want to make sure that you're hydrated and flushing. Water is so important for doing those things. So, okay, next question. This is an ego question. Would you eat a food, a meal, or have a diet knowing that it provided you with no nutritional benefits, but simply tasted divine? We're checking on your like, (laughs) yeah. So basically like, would you date somebody knowing that they look smoking hot, uh, but no conversation, no emotional connection, no value, but you liked looking at them, right? Let me, so that was, that's one question. It's really important. So we call this eye candy foods, right? So really important to know if you're like, wow, that looks so good. And so that you eat it and it's not only not providing you with nutrition, but it's probably harming you. So they were beautifully decorated uh, sweets or ooh, yummy, drippy, gravy, fatty type things. Or um, yeah, those things that are really eye candy. I mean, chefs make a be- beautiful job when they plate these things. Um, and, and the question that goes with that, would you eat a food that was healthy for you, even if it didn't appeal to your taste buds? So here's an interesting one because I do that. I will eat the ugliest looking food, right? (laughs) Or ones that I'm like, "Mm, I don't know, but it's so healthy for you that I'm like, all right, let me, let me try. And then I actually find the beauty in it. I do. I actually find the attractiveness after like my food generally is pretty, it's pretty ugly. Yeah. I got ugly food and I don't care. I don't care because even I, I made, um, almond cheese. I made almond cheese, which kind of looks like spreadable cream cheese that's been frozen and thawed, right? Uh, but I know what's in it. I know it's really good. So I'm excited and it tastes fabulous, but I know kind of looking at it, it's kind of whitish, grayish, weirdish. It looks like pla- not plas- plaster. It looks like plaster, <laughs> but, but you know what? I know how good it is for me. And I know that it's like giving, like feeding my life force and it's making me really happy. So those are the questions right there. So you have to know like what's drawing you, what's attracting you. So let me check in on some of these questions. Sugar addict. Aha, Christina. All right. A recovering sugar addict. Oh, fabulous. Okay. I love that you're a recovering addict. So what you've done basically, Christina, is you've dumped that diet, right? That's not a menu match for you. Sugar is not a menu match for you. So you are now dating some other foods. Um, and I, I would love to ask you, Christina, did you, is it Christina? Yeah, Christi- Christina, did you start with, um, kind of doing a little bit of a, 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 maybe having some sweet potato or some squash, like something that's more carb carrots, carbohydrate that delivers uh, sugar in a different way, not refined sugar, but in that way, or did you 
you know, just walk. Did you just walk out, walk out on sugar? (laughs) I would love to know. So creative, here's your creative question. Have you ever considered experimenting with a food that you are already familiar with by creating it into something new and even more delicious? That's a good one. Back then, squash was one of mine, but I'm thinking, wow, I probably made so many things. I think for me, um, nuts and seeds. I Chia seed pudding, oh my gosh, like yum. Who makes chia seed pudding? It's so good. <laughs> it's so easy. And again, I love that it's so cheap. You know what? It's so cheap. You know, I take my two tablespoons of chia seeds, pop up in a little bowl, pour in, you can use water, but I, I do use almond milk generally. Almond milk, if I'm feeling like I do want just a little tiny touch of sweetness. Um, I use maple syrup because there is magnesium and potassium and some vitamins and minerals in there, but I don't always do that. It depends. I might actually just, um, take my kitchen scissors. Who has kitchen scissors? These are the best things ever. And I'll take two prunes. Yeah. Dry prunes. And I just chop, 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 or you can, you know, chef chop them. And I put them in and you let it set in literally like 20 minutes. It's already turning into your pudding because chia seeds are fabulous like that. But I just tuck it away in the fridge. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. I put cardamom, cardamom seed. Oh, oh, they're so good. And so all I do is you get the little pods, they're cardamom pods. I should talk about the next time. I put them in the mortar and pestle and just crush them up. Right. And just put a few of those little, I'm going to do that today. Well, thanks guys. Now I know what I'm having later on this afternoon, but the cardamom with a little bit of maple syrup, but you don't have to, um, the oat, maybe I'll do it with the oat creamer, um, and some chia seeds. Oh my gosh. Fabulous. Now that's a fun way to experiment with a food that you may already like. You already probably put chia seeds in your salads or oatmeals or things like that. So I'm excited to hear what you guys are doing. Okay. So Kristen, she does 132 ounce of lemon water and we're watching our teeth. Um, so green tea and then, Ooh, look at you. My gosh. But you know what? The plain water, sometimes, you know, um, we just need something to wet our whistle to get us going in there. Like, just give us a little bit like, well, why should I date you? You know? So those things that you're doing with your water are, are good because they're not the only thing I would be concerned there, Christina, if you haven't seen about the oil pulling and your teeth, make sure you're not constantly bathing your teeth, which are like little straws with something. Um, and, and of course the enamel, right? Like you're going to be, um, the lemons harsh on your teeth. So maybe if you're doing apple cider vinegar or lemon, just remember guys that, uh, you're, you're not having enough time alone, alone time with your saliva. <laughs> you're dating your saliva now. Great. Um, you need a little bit more alone time with your own saliva so that you can bathe and really keep your teeth nice and healthy and, and your blood, your blood work as well. So just be mindful of that. Okay. Okay, good. These guys, these questions are great. Okay. Oh, next questions revolve around addiction. So we can, we can talk about this. Um, would an allergy prevent you from eating a food like wine, dairy, eggs, wheat? Um, and I was sharing a thing. Oh, that was the question. Would an allergy prevent you from eating foods? The reason why I say this, uh, this question is important is a lot of people can even have like a little bit of a lactose intolerance um, or yeah, gluten, but regardless, they're still going to eat it. They're like, I don't care. I'll deal with having diarrhea. I'll deal with, um, being uncomfortable and having some pain. I'll deal with some eczema or rash because I'm not giving this up. Mine, I must say, and I'm so totally, I'm, I'm outing myself on this one completely. I still put a little bit of sugar in my tea in the, the first morning tea and addiction or not. It's more, you know, it's just a, it's a feel good memory. My mother and like our family we always drink tea and <laughs> we always put a little bit of milk and sugar. So now I've, I've changed my milk, which is good cream. I've changed because now I'm making oat cream and, and almond cream. I love it. Um, but yes. So are, are there some foods and you need to, it's remember about not being perfect, right? So no punishment and no giving up, but just knowing, okay, I'm doing this. What is it I need to do around it? So what I did was I add fiberific. I add like um, a chicory root or fiber. I add fiber to it because what my concern about with my sugar that I'm adding is that I would be spiking my insulin levels. So what I'm doing, I know that to bring down my uh, insulin levels, my glucose levels, my blood sugar levels, that I'm going to add either protein, fat, and fiber. So I'm going to add, I'm adding my fiber with that, having my avocado. So I'm okay with that. Now you may not be, it might be your threshold. You're like, that's just too much of that food to date. Right. So Christine share with me. Okay. Include. Okay. So you've had a pituitary tumor. That was, that's obviously tricky. Uh, you had, I love that you had one and that you're good. Now you are just such an interesting lady, Christina. And I love that everybody's sharing here with me. And is Andrea still with us and uh, Stacy, let me know how you guys are doing. Okay. Cause I still have a few more questions we can get through. So this is fun. 
the is still in the edition. What foods are currently in your diet that you didn't know? What did I write? What foods are currently in your diet that you know don't give you any benefit and might even be taking health away from you? I call these booty call foods. Okay, we talked about that before, but I do. And I say that they're amazing in the moment, but then um, you're left with no long-term value and are on the cycle of when can you have it again? Now, I'm not saying you can't have those foods because booty calls are fun here and there, right? <laughs> booty call foods, they, ha- they serve their purpose, but we want to know how many of those foods are, is your diet totally booty, fo- booty call foods? Like is, is all of it a booty call food? And you're just going, I got to get this one. I got that. Ooh. And it's, and then after you're like, oh, wow, I didn't really get much from that. Like it was great then, but now what, now what it's half an hour later, it's two hours later. It's, these are important things because how much time are you spending with your booty call foods? That's the question. How much time are you spending with your booty call foods? Because you are, if you're spending too much time, you're taking away that time that you should be having with your relationship. Because our goal here, our goal here is to date our diets, to get engaged, engaged, woohoo, I'm engaged, (laughs) engaged to your energy, EE, engage the energy, and then to marry your menu. Now, you're marrying your menu for that that state of your health, perhaps you, you have a tumor and you are working through health. Maybe you are diabetic and your, I was borderline diabetic and, you know, and that was hugely important for me to get that settled and straight. So, all right, let's go through just a few more and then I'm going to wrap up. Okay. So this was fun. These are your values, promiscuity. How well do you know your food before you eat it? Are you jumping in a bed with this food? <laughs> Right. What country does it come from? What's their background? How long ago was it picked? How was it raised? You know, I'm kind of doing my little fun things here. Um, did it have any diseases? You know, we protection here. Um, or did it take hormones or steroids? You got to know how your food was grown, built, made. We talk, I can't believe this is funny. I'm saying this. We talk a lot about protected and safe sex, yet we eat food that we have no idea where they've come from, where they've been. And so, (laughs) <laughs> this is a funny one to land on. Um, but that is important. You know, sometimes we don't, we, we don't want to know. It's like, oh, I don't want to know what's in that. It just looks so good. And I want it. Don't tell me what's in it. You might say, because I, you know, it will ruin the relationship for me, but it is important to protect yourself from the different foods and what it is like. Number one thing here, I'll go into the organics a little bit later, like the other next week, next week. But did you know that you cannot wash off glyphosate. It doesn't wash off. You can't wash it off. It's, it's, it's sticky. It's in there. It's not removed. So, and that's your roundup ready, right? This is like, if you're not buying organic, you are consuming glyphosate, which it disrupts like every part of your being. And so an accumulation of this terrible, terrible. So really important to see. So can you see now who's liking these questions? Who, who has not really considered these questions or who would like better yet who would like to have all of these questions? Cause just email me then, and then I can send them to you. And even I'm going to take it up a notch even better. Once you do receive this, if you email me and you want the questionnaire and you go through them, send your answers, answers, answers your answers back to me. And then I can actually give you a little bit of feedback or I can at least, even if it's just accountability, if you just want me to know, if you just want to let me know how your dating, your diet is coming along. Like, are you falling in love with the right foods for you? That's the key. And to, I always love to connect this with, you know, we, we are on this beautiful enlightened world network channel, the living network, um, enlightened living. And this, when we are in a bad relationship and the connection is just not there, we, we can't listen to these things. We don't hear these things. We don't know what we want. And can you imagine that this very foundation isn't set? Can you see how you'd step out into life? Yeah, you're stepping out into life. You're not showing up in life. Showing up in life. That's what Tomas Garza and I talk about this all the time. It's, I don't want you just to step out in, into the world. I want you to show up. I want you to be aware of the enlightenment that's here for you every day. Every day when you ask these questions and get to get to know yourself, it's through self-inquiry. There, I said it. I couldn't say self-inquiry. <laughs> self-inquiry you know when you are this is something i work with gp walsh on you guys probably see him on sundays so you got tomas scars every day that we work together about showing up (laughs) and we've got gp walsh who we are um non-duality doing self-inquiry we must know ourselves and by doing this profile you know menu match profile questionnaire 
get to really find out what do, what is it I'm already doing and who am I and how would I like to show up in this world as my bright, beautiful, abundant, prosperous self? You have so much to offer. And my original tagline to dating your diet before uh, falling in love with the right food was, what does your food bring to the table? Like when we are in relationships, we might say like, well, what are you bringing to the table? What, do I, what am I bringing to the table? You have yourself. You are bringing yourself to the table. So show up at the table, your full self. Get, get to be in love with yourself and love with life. And this is why I love doing this. And this is why I love <laughs> coming here with you guys and you know, asking these questions. We're going to continue the questions each time and talk about a new food. But thank you guys for reminding me. Let me share about cardamom because it's one of my favorite things. It's actually something that the, the aroma to it, it, it turns me on. It, it does. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's like the best cologne. Um, Suzanne, perfect. Okay. Yes, please email me that. And I just want to go to the questions before I say goodbye. I have substituted food for, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I love that you guys are using booty call foods. Yes. Lily's chocolate. Oh, you know, I love dark chocolate. Um, yes. Stevia and monk fruit has made finding subs easier. Yeah. And yeah, let's, maybe we'll do a show on sweeteners, like sweetness. We'll call it sweetness. I like that better than sweeteners. Um, so, but next week tune in because next Thursday at 10 AM Eastern, um, I think let's, let's talk where your food came from. Let's talk about a little bit about organics, the way it's how long local, locally grown, you know, um, I think that's going to be a really important thing. And we'll continue with these questions as well, but you might already be ahead of the game because you have emailed me and you'll already have had your questions and maybe we can share. That would be great if you want to show up on the live next Thursday and you can share some of your, your answers on your profile, not questionnaire. Oh, before I go, before I go, I'm all going to sign off. I have a question for you guys. So I don't know how, I have to create it still, but I would love to do something fun with you guys. And I want to call it speed dating. Now, speed dating in my world is a buffet. It's a buffet because you go and you sample a little bit of everything. And then the things you like, you go back for more. It's like speed dating. Mind you, I have not speed dated, but I am pretty sure that's how it works. So I would love to create this event, an online event speed dating where on our buffet, each one of us and all, you know, in our homes, we could perhaps say, you know what, I would really like to try, cause this is about trying something new. I would like to try this new food and this new food and what we can do. Um, I will come up to, and I can maybe talk with maybe some Stacy. Um, we'll do some other stuff, some, some cooks and chefs and people pull things together. And we will put out some simple, simple uh, recipes that each one of us can make in our home. And then we could all be trying the foods at the same time and then share about it and say what we, what we enjoy, what we like. And, and I can be educating you about the value of being in a relationship with that food. So I'm putting that out there. Well, you know, maybe it's a summertime thing. Maybe we'll build up. I'm not sure. We're just heading into spring now, but let me know if that interests you. If you like to do this all together, I think it'd be fun. Maybe we'll do a group. We can start it. And I really want to thank you guys for being here today with me. Um, thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for dating your diet. And I will see all of you next Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And it's a date, right? It's a date. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll see you then. Bye-bye don't know how to shut this off from here. That's love. Hmm. Oh. I've recorded this in a new way that I didn't record before. So let me sign off. Okay, here we go. Bye guys. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, goodness me.